This is where it begins. A place where she can dive into her dreams and swim against the current to reach her goal. It is a starting point of a journey to explore uncharted territories, to use new knowledge for the best of mankind, immersing in sustainable lifestyle, where you can feel the breeze on your skin. It's times like this that makes you feel alive. A time to create, a time to capture precious moments. Where dreams are no longer just a dream, but the beginnings of a new reality. This is where I harness my potential. This is where I explore possibilities. This is where I expand my mind. This is where her story begins. This is Edu City. kita tengok ramai uh, yang mengambil ah, bahagian okay. uh, dalam berani eh. uh, so we hope this thing will happen selalu and kita kita dekat Edu City always open kepada apa-apa event yang nak berada di sini Hi and Assalamualaikum. Welcome everyone to the Jump Start Your Career Talk or JYC Talk by EduCity. I am Husna Shamimi and I will be your MC for today. A warm welcome to our participants and viewers today who are watching EduCity Series 3 Jump Start Your Career Talk stream live on Zoom and EduCity official Facebook account. Thank you for participating in today's event. On 30th August 2021, we had completed the first series of GYC talk by EduCity's Managing Director, Encik Wan Ahmad Saifuddin, and the second series on 21st September 2021 by the Head of Operation of GFM, Encik Mahput Sairan, about the Facilities Management Career Pathway. For your information, GYC talk is one of the series of events under 
Orang Muda Johor Fest or known as OMJ Fest that was um, officiated by Tunku Makota Johor, Tunku Ismail Idris on 20th November 2021 at Tunku Mahkota Ismail Youth Centre Johor Bahru. OMJ Fest is an initiative by the Johor State Government to ensure that youth who are synonymous with productive, creative and innovative nature can return to an active life after almost two years of enduring the COVID-19 pandemic. There are about 80 activities under OMJ Fest that are organized by government departments and agencies, as well as the private sector that covers the categories of sports and fitness, creative and arts, skills and entrepreneurship, education and leadership and um, re religion, sorry, implemented from 20th November to 26th December 2021. And on um, this third session today, we will feature Mr. Prakash Nagarajan, the Vice President of Economic Prosperity at Iskandar Regional Development Authority, or known as IRDA, the speaker, and will be moderated by Mr. Fauzan Mansur, the Assistant Vice President of EduCity Academy. A big introduction of our moderator, Mr. Fauzan is the head of EduCity Academy, EduCity's training arm, who are leading the engagement and development of talent life cycle solutions for EduCity Academy's client, which includes IIB group of companies, the state of Johor, and industry players in Iskandar. On today's episode, we will, we will be discussing on the topic of 15 years of IRDA and opportunities for the youth. Mr. Prakash will be sharing on IRDA's 15-year efforts to create Iskandar Malaysia as a robust and sustainable metropolis and future opportunities for youth in Iskandar Putri. A little bit inside of uh, IRDA, IRDA is a Malaysian federal government statutory body tasked with the objective of regulating and driving various stakeholders in both public and private sector towards realizing the vision of developing Iskandar Malaysia into a strong and sustainable metropolis of international standing. IRDA has launched its 15-year campaign um, called Iskandar Malaysia 15-year commemorative campaign or IM15CC. And in conjunction with that, they introduced the Secure at Iskandar Malaysia an initiative which aims to help rakyat and small businesses to sustain their economic recovery. So, without further ado, I'll pass the session to our moderator for today, Mr. Fauzan, to kick off the session. Over to you, Mr. Fauzan. Thank you, Usna. Assalamualaikum and good afternoon to the viewers. Um, today, we'll be discussing uh, a topic that is very dear to my heart. Uh, we're going to know more about IRDA, and we're going to understand what IRDA is, is providing opportunities for the youth. Um, I think before, before we start, uh, there is a Q&A chat box, Q&A sections, uh, and also chat box if the viewers would like to interact or wanted to ask questions to the panelists, and I'll try my best to pick up a few questions as, uh, from, from the Q&A box as well as the chat room. Uh, I will be introducing our speakers for today. Um, Mr. Prakash Nagarajan uh, is the Vice President, Economic Prosperity and Head of Business Ecosystem for IRDA. He has been working with IRDA for more than nine, seven years. Uh, he is an executive with senior management experience with a solid background in strategic marketing, sales, and technical product development. Uh, he has worked for over two decades in ASEAN markets as well as market in North America. Uh, Mr. Prakash is experienced across multiple organization structures, including the MNCs, the GLCs, and locally owned and also offshore companies. He, work, he has worked in diverse uh, cultures, growing revenues, analyzing and resolving business issues, conceptualizing and delivering market and product strategies, partnering with government and regulatory bodies, uh, closing significant business deal, driving operational efficiencies, and building and nurturing sales teams. It is my honor to invite Mr. Prakash to the spotlight. How are you, sir? Thank you for the introduction, uh, Fauzan. Uh, a very good afternoon to everyone uh, listening in from out there. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be a part of this. Uh, I yep. think 
this is a today is going to be a wonderful session for us to share um, all the hard work that we've been putting in place um, in uh, Iskandar Malaysia and also not forgetting the Johor State. Um, and uh, it will be very exciting to share some of the opportunities with uh, especially the young people out there. Yep. I think I have the honor of working with Mr. Prakash in one of the projects that we are currently doing. Mr. Prakash sits on my steering committee, the Prantis Iskandar Steering Committee, which is something that we are also doing for, for the youth. Um, Let's jump straight to the session, Mr. Prakash. Um, I think we have viewers coming from different backgrounds. We've got graduates, we've got youth, we've got people looking for jobs, graduates who just graduated and still looking for opportunities around the standard region. Maybe if you can share a bit what is IRDA and what, what are the mandates, how it has established. And, and uh, I think we, we have celebrated 15 years of IRDA and we would like to know more about that. Spoiler is yours, Mr. Prakash. Thank you. Thank you, Fang Zan. Um, okay, so I will be sharing a short presentation on Iskandar Malaysia um, for, for everyone's benefit and knowledge. Just give me a moment. Okay, I hope everyone can see the presentation on your screen. Yep. Okay, so I will start off by sharing on the geography of Iskandar Malaysia. So um, just for everybody's benefit and knowledge, uh, it's important to understand that Iskandar Malaysia is not just confined to Iskandar Putri, which is the often, often the common misconception that a lot of people have. However, geographically, Iskandar Malaysia is actually much bigger uh, than just one area, which is Iskandar Putri. Uh, in fact, we have uh, five flagship zones uh, across uh, Johor, Southern Johor. And if you look at it in terms of size, it actually encompasses an area of 2,217 square kilometers, uh, which is which is pretty big. Um, you know, if you if you look at it geographically, with each flagship having its own uh, targeted economic focus, um, which is diverse across the nine promoted sectors that Irda emphasizes on, including uh, finance, tourism, healthcare, uh, creative. Uh, I think for everybody's knowledge, there is, we have uh, a very world-class, I would say, studio, production studio in uh, Iskandar Malaysia, known as Iskandar Malaysia Studios. Um, and in, in this studio, uh, various, you know, um, international productions have, have been filmed here, have been produced here, um, and and it, it offers a wide range of um, opportunities, not just for the, the you know, the uh, people in Johor, but I think for Malaysians in general, um, you know, to work with, uh, with the international studio, dealing with international artists, uh, international stars, and, you know, and, and it's all happening here in Iskandar and Johor. Um, there's also a lot of emphasis and focus on sectors like logistics. Uh, which is a growing business, um, I'm sure you'd agree, um, especially now with the onset of uh, a lot of online shopping and online buying, I'm sure um, many of us receive packages, uh, you know, some of us receive packages every day, right? And most of the things we buy, we buy it online now. So uh, logistics is a key uh, sector. It's a key important um, business and uh, it is a booming business. Um, in Johor and in Iskandar Malaysia. Um, so in terms of our size, uh, we have plans, to, the, 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 the federal government has plans to expand uh, Iskandar Malaysia to the greater part of Johor. So whatever that we do um, in terms of the programs that I'm going to share later on in my presentation, Fauzan, uh, is, is applicable to across the Johor state. So it doesn't mean that, um, you know, it's only confined to within Iskandar Malaysia, but I think, uh, you know, in, in, in the spirit of uh, economic recovery, in the spirit of, uh, you know, restarting, jumpstarting uh, businesses back, um, you know, we, we have a wider agenda that we would like to build and we would like to see the benefits spill over to the people of Johor in general. Now, what is IRDA and how do we, how are we structured? So IRDA is, um, is a federal government agency. 
um, and we are under the Prime Minister's Department. So by way of our structure, we are, we have two co-chairmen, the first being the Prime Minister himself, uh, followed by the Chief Minister of Johor State. So the two of them are the, the co-chairmen that, uh, that, that sit on our board, uh, that drive the vision for Iskandar Malaysia. Uh, Irda has three primary roles. The first role is to plan, uh, as in being a master planner for the development of Iskandar Malaysia. Um, economic planning, where we plan and we grow our promoted sectors by offering customized incentives to investors um, and also building the business ecosystem to support the business community that invests in Iskandar Malaysia. Uh, we also have a role to facilitate these investors by way of doing whatever that is necessary for them to land on our shores. Now, uh, this would also include uh, things like, you know, uh, facilitating uh, talent, human capital for them, um, and also uh, linking them up with, uh, you know, small and medium enterprises and also businesses that will be that will be supportive um, of their business activities. Huh? So they will form part of the supply chain. And thirdly, our role is to promote Iskandar Malaysia as a destination to work, live and play. Um, now, I, I, I'm going to share this with, uh, with the audience. I myself, I'm uh, from Kuala Lumpur. Um, I decided to uh, take a step and move to Iskandar Malaysia in Johor some seven years ago. And I must say, I, have, I haven't looked back since. <laughs> um, I think it's very exciting to be here in, in Iskanda in Johor. Um, you know, there's always something new happening every year, and it's always nice to be a part of a, a dynamic city. You know, um, I think local Johorians will know that uh, Johor, you know, was was not like what it is today. Um, and I think today we we have uh, we can we can boldly say that you know we are. Uh, you know, we're heading towards uh, being a, 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 you know, a, a very livable uh, city, um, especially for those uh, talents who are not from uh, Johor originally. So, essentially, I, I can uh, also uh, vote for that, Mr. Prakash. It's been two <laughs> years, and, and I'm loving it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, no, there's no traffic jam. Exactly. You that's on top of the list. To, yeah. So you, don't to, you don't have to buy a bunch toll and things like that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think these are some of the, the fringe benefits lah, of, of being here in Iskandar. Um, now, how does IRDA do what we do? Uh, we are actually guided by a, uh, by a very important document uh, known as the Comprehensive Development Plan. So the Comprehensive Development Plan um, is basically a master plan that is uh, that guides us on developing um, the the uh, you know developing Iskandar Malaysia into a into a balanced city. So there are three key areas. If you if you if you look at it, the three circles that you see on your screen. The first being wealth generation, uh, where you know we we need to we need to attract investments to come into Johor, and uh, we need to ensure that um, the the there is a conducive environment. There is a conducive uh, facilities, infrastructure, and so on, to land these investments on our shore, and ensure that uh, you know they provide the opportunity for people to generate wealth. And how do people do this? This is by by way of creating jobs, by way of uh, offering uh, you know uh, new types of employment, by giving opportunities to small and medium enterprises to be part of the supply chain. Um, you know, and and all of this has its own ripple effect. Now, as with any development, uh, it's important to ensure that whatever investments that we that we bring into Iskandar Malaysia are sustainable investments. And when I say I, I use the term sustainability, um, you know, in a very broad context, um, is to ensure that not only do they provide us with the financial means, but they also ensure that there are benefits to the community. So the wealth sharing and inclusiveness agenda is, uh, you know, is realized. And we ensure that you know whatever investments that come in, whatever incentives that we we provide, uh, is contributed back to society uh, by way of uh, programs, including social programs, and um, you know 
talent building programs and you know relevant programs that have its impact to the local community. And last but not least, um, in ensuring that everything that we do, um, we need to ensure that there is resource optimization. Uh, we have a low carbon blueprint, a low carbon agenda, one that's uh, not only recognized locally, but I think has been uh, has been acknowledged and recognized globally by the United Nations. And uh, we are we are very steadfast in our commitment to ensure that uh, you know Iskandar Malaysia and Johor in particular is a very livable. It's a very environmentally friendly place to live. Moving on to my next slide, so I, I think I've tried to compress as much as I can <laughs> in in uh, in one slide over here, and I think this is a this is a very good. Uh, picture of, of the key milestones that has uh, been achieved in Iskandar Malaysia over the last 15 years. There are a few things that they've come to mind for me personally. Uh, I remember that, you know, when IKEA opened up in, in Johor for the first time, uh, you know, and I also uh, remember, uh, you know, us being, having, uh, you know, Johor has uh, Hershey, Hershey, uh, Hershey plant here, Hershey chocolates plant. And that plant is actually the biggest outside the United States. So I think it gives a lot of, uh, you know, it can give a lot of, um, uh, it gives you an idea or gives you a picture of how big uh, some of these investments are and how much of benefits they have uh, spilled over into the local community and the local ecosystem. And uh, to sum it up, as I said, uh, you know, Iskandar Malaysia is, our, our our tagline and our our goal is to uh, ensure that Iskandar Malaysia is turned into a metropolis to and a choice destination to invest, work, live, and also play. Um, and it's interesting to see all this cultivating itself, the building blocks being put together to achieve this vision um, over the years. And we will continue to do this to ensure that um, you know we we realize our goal of uh, turning Iskandar Malaysia and Johor into that metropolis of international standing that we strive to achieve and strive to see one day. Yep. I think just to add to that, uh, like you said, coming, coming from the Klam Valley, um, I mean, I, I can actually have the thing that, that, that is accessible in Klam Valley here without the traffic jam, without the hassle, I mean, we have, like you said, Kia, we have, um, we have Sogo here, we have Paradigm here, Mid Valley here. Uh, to tell you the truth, uh, I spend more times going to Mid Valley in my two years here than about six years when I was in KL to the Mid Valley in KL. Because, I mean, it's, 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 it's far and it's right smack in the federal highway. So, you know, like, you know it is like... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think I think the one emphasis that I have to mention here is the quality of life. Exactly. You know, yeah. I think the quality of life you get here, um, you know, is is very balanced. Yep. Um, I just only today I was having lunch with a with a with a friend of mine who came all the way from Kuala Lumpur, and uh, he says, "My goodness, it's so green. It's so uh, you know, it's so it's so lovely here. You know, it's such a such a pleasant." Uh, sight for the eyes, you know. Uh, well, it's understandable, you know. I, I, I don't know. I feel that, um, you know, the quality of life, uh, the work-life balance, the, the, you know, safe and uh, dynamic environment that offers you this lifestyle is something that really is of value la, to a lot of people. I think it is interesting. I mean, thank you for 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 the the uh, presentation. It is interesting to see how the economic development strategy is being put into place, which we the youth are. I'm saying we. I'm still youth, so which we, uh, me and my peers would not have that kind of uh, information being being thrown around. So, um, is as you say, achieving a balanced city state, you need all kind of. Uh, elements to be put in place. And um, it, it was to note that Iskandar region is actually three times more than the size of Singapore. So we can actually see the potential, the magnitude of, of Iskandar region itself. 
And uh, I want to drill down into talent. So uh, as, you see, as you say, talent is one of the key crucial part of spurring the economic development of the regions. Um, we have, we're seeing, we, we just had budget, the national budget 2022 on 29th of October. We even had uh, Joe's budget on 18th of November, which we are looking at a very significant amount of budget being put into one in talent development and two, especially on uh, uh, assisting, uh, if, if, if I can, can borrow the word of the Joe State, Orang Mundi Joho, into, into upscaling themselves uh, various program has been put inside the budget. So, uh, if you can share what type of uh, programs that IRDA is actually offering, and how how is the program is going to support the development of the youth in Skanda region? Certainly, I would love to do that. Um, and I also would like to emphasize um, that, you know, over the years, uh, this is something that I have observed um, and also. Uh, having the experience that I have, um, it's very interesting and exciting to see new types of job opportunities opening up in this kind of Malaysia and Johor. Historically, if you look at it, uh, most of our talent, uh, local talent in Johor, they, you know, you know, apart from getting whatever opportunities that they had over here, they couldn't really grow their careers because there were very uh, limited opportunities for them to do so. So oftentimes these talents would go to Singapore or they would uh, move to Kuala Lumpur in search of uh, better jobs and, you know, um, and, 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 and opportunities for them to grow their careers. But I think over time, um, over the years, especially in the, in the course of the last uh, four to five years, I think as we have seen more new types of investment come into the uh, to Johor and Iskandar Malaysia. They, with that came new opportunities, new job opportunities. I would, I would like to talk about one sector, which is the global business services sector or GBS. Um, I think GBS is, is, is a sector that has grown um, significantly um, over the years in Iskandar and Johor. And, uh, you know, there are big brand, big name companies that are operating here in Iskandar now. Um, so young people, they have opportunities to uh, get into this sector and, and they have job opportunities waiting for them, paying them salaries um, as what they would earn in Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. So I think over the years, one of the things that we've observed is the salary gap actually narrowing itself. So if you talk about, uh, say, five or six years ago, uh, there would be a gap of some, something between, um, you know, 17 to even as high as 25% in terms of salaries earned by, uh, you know, talents in Johor versus talents in Kuala Lumpur. However, I think over the course of time, over the course of years, we have seen that gap narrow. Yeah, which means that uh, people are earning better salaries. Um, there are new type of job opportunities available to them, uh, job opportunities that it perhaps even is not available in Kuala Lumpur. Yeah, so it's that, that's also an interesting fact because um, you know, not only have we been seeing uh, local talent get opportunities, but we've also seen an influx of interstate migration, meaning talents coming from the Klang Valley uh, and, and deciding to work um, and live in, uh, in Johor. So I think, I think these, are, these are exciting opportunities. Um, and I will share with uh, everyone um, the list of programs that we have. Okay, uh, so supporting the Scandinavian Malaysia youth ecosystem. So um, as, as we all know, um, you know, we, we have a, Scandinavian Malaysia has a, a, a agenda on uh, developing youths. It's part of our wider wealth sharing um, initiative, which includes, um, you know, the youth as, as a key component to our community building. Um, and the youth are always included in whatever uh, activities or whatever programs that we craft out uh, so that opportunities come for them in two forms. One, um, by them getting better jobs um, and getting themselves employed with some of the new economic sectors and the promoted sectors in Johor, and also uh, providing them with opportunities to 
set up their own small and medium enterprise or their own business ventures or go into entrepreneurship. Now, as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, I think it's safe to say that many people were affected by the, the various movement control orders and you know, it was it was a necessary measure for the government to take to contain and curb the COVID-19 uh, situation. But what we are doing now is our focus is really to ensure that businesses and also our talent are able to restart or jump back into their careers and, and start rebuilding themselves. And the government has, uh, through through the budget, given a very firm and strong commitment uh, by ensuring that they, they've they given a significant allocation for Johor uh, to ensure that we are able to support the local community and local businesses here. As we've always said, you know, uh, Johor only is a bit of a unique state. I say unique because, uh, you know, oftentimes we are, we, are, we are geographically located right next to Singapore. And, um, you know, whatever impact that COVID-19 brought, um, had we had a double whammy, I would call it, because the first whammy being the COVID-19 pandemic, which uh, I think, you know, led to a lot of uh, uh, difficulties for people across the country. But we had an additional uh, whammy, which is the closure of the border. Is a lot of businesses uh, relied on, uh, you know, uh, Singaporeans or for that matter, visitors from Singapore uh, coming over the weekend or you, perhaps even during the weekdays to, to spend their money in, in Johor. So that effectively stopped overnight. And, uh, you know, a lot of businesses got affected as a result of that. So I think we, just to add to that, Mr. Prakash, I, I, yeah. I came across an article recently uh, before COVID, uh, the, the numbers of Johorian crossing over to work is actually about half, close to about 400,000, 350 to 400,000. Yeah. But once MCO 1.0 hit, the numbers actually reduced to about 100,000. So the, there's 300,000 who are actually out of job. Right. Which yeah. we need to think about, yeah. Yes. So I think with all this in mind, um, that's where I think the, the, the federal government decided to put their money where the mouth is, and so to say, and, and actually uh, give a special allocation for Johor for us to build our programs and our agenda. So uh, we have come up with a, a, a program called Secure at Iskandar Malaysia, which stands for Sustainable Social Economic Recovery Initiatives in Iskandar Malaysia, uh, which, is, which can be a mouthful. So Secure is, 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 the, is the condensed term. And under the Secure initiative, uh, there are several programs that have been crafted out. Um, and I will run through some of these programs. You can get more information by going to the link uh, on your screens. So do take your time to go and visit our website and run through all the programs that are listed there. And if any of these programs uh, apply to you, uh, you can be part of the program and, and submit your applications to the contact person listed in the website. Okay, so the first program I would like to share with you today is the Iskandar Malaysia uh, I'm Start program. So what is the I'm Start program all about? The I'm Start program is actually a one-off grant uh, up to 10,000 ringgit. Yeah? Now this special incentive is actually created to assist micro, small and medium enterprises um, and individuals who reside in Johor and are severely affected by the pandemic. You know, you, you mentioned the interesting statistic, Fauzan, about uh, 300,000 people who have, uh, you know, you know whether they have lost their jobs or they have seen a reduction of their income. Um, so these are, these are affected parties, right? So effectively, some of them, um, you know, when I met them, they, they told me that they are, because of the, the years of, the, of them working in Singapore, um, they, they find that they are not in a position to to work in Malaysia, they, they find it difficult to adapt. So what some of them do is that they venture, venture into their own businesses. They have their own startups, they, they have their own uh, online storefronts, they have their own digital storefronts. And I must say that um, some of them are doing quite well in this, yeah? So we decided to, to cultivate this and uh, ensure that we have a program that will at least ease their burden a little bit. One of the biggest challenges when you want to 
start your own business is your capital, your startup capital. So with the I'm Start program, um, you know, it enables you to get, get the ball running, get yourself into business and, uh, you know, build your, build your skills to ensure that you are, you, are, you are able to sustain and generate income from your new business, particularly a digital or e-commerce business. So this program is actually open to all Malaysians in the Johor state. Um, and it's for those who are, you know, what we would call youth, right? So each between 18 to 45 years old. Um, and of course, we, we see this program, uh, you know, we've, once we started this program, we had an overwhelming response. And, uh, you know, we're hoping that we get more additional allocations to, to continue the program in, in time to come. Next program is uh, I Am Makmo. So I Am Makmo looks into the society. It looks into, it, it has three components. It has community social enterprise, uh, where you get a small uh, startup capital of 10,000 ringgit uh, based on a business proposal that you would share with, with us. Um, now, because of its very nature being a community social enterprise, there's a minimum of three people in a group uh, who will be interested to come together to start this business. Now, apart from providing the business capital, there's also capacity building um, where the, the participants would be trained to attend short courses uh, on entrepreneurship for a period of three months. Because sometimes when you are, when you are you know, you're new in business, there are many things that, you know, you may not be aware of. So by ensuring that you are trained, you would know the ins and outs of how you can run your own small uh, business. Um, and of course, there's also the uh, I'm more fun, which is really more to uh, conduct social economic activities um, for communities. And there is a fund available of up to 20,000 ringgit. Lah. This is more for those that are interested in uh, doing community type activities. I think you need sekarang banyak yang suka buat. You know, this sort of, I, I think oh, there are many community movements out there, you know, uh, you know, whether it is cycling or, you know, riding or whatever, but it's for a good cause. It has a, it has a, it has a uh, enter enterprise, um, you know, element to it. And uh, who can apply? It is uh, mostly NGOs and also, um, you know, entities which are operating in Iskandar Malaysia. Yeah, I think it's a trend right now. I mean, most of, most of my, I think I got a lot of peers who venturing into social enterprises. Yeah. It's, I think it's, we are, we are way past uh, looking for, uh, I mean, the youth are lo actually looking for something with a cost. So it's right. something that they believe in, something that will drive them in. So hence why we're seeing a lot of social enterprises coming up right now. Yeah. And sometimes I'm actually moved by the, by the uh, you know the elements or the the values behind their you know their beliefs, um, I think this is very healthy, especially for youths, um, because you know you, you're doing something for a cause, right? You're doing something with a purpose, and I think that is uh, is, is something is a value that is to be treasured, lah. Yeah? yeah. Okay, moving on, we also have uh, another program known as Youth to Biz. Um, so Youth to Biz is a program that emphasizes again for small and medium enterprises. Um, it has two elements to it. It's a, it's a grant program where, um, you know, we cover for mobile vehicle businesses, which means the use of a mobile vehicle to conduct your business. Now it can be a food truck or for that matter, it could even be, a, you know, it could very well be a, even a, a mobile landscaping company. Um, I have seen some very creative um, you know, entrepreneurs come out of these programs, including one uh, which is a mobile bookstore. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? So this, this, and I believe it's a lady. So what she does, she, you know, she uses the, the mobile vehicle or truck that she has converted into a beautiful bookstore and a library. And she goes around Johor, you know, to actually visit schools and, uh, you know, sell her books to students and, and while in the process, um, you know, encourage uh, the reading habit, lah, you know, which I think is, uh, is a very noble thing. Um, so that's the mobile vehicle business. Um, next is the shared business facility, 
this is where um, a few people come together, a uh, minimum of five actually, um, SMEs who are running the business under the same roof. So what is the grant cover? Uh, the grant covers uh, up to 125,000 ringgit in terms of your, uh, you know, your, your renovation costs, your rental of up to three months, and 15%, um, you know, up, up of the grant which can be used for the rental of the premise. Uh, for the mobile vehicle, uh, we, we do provide the matching grant of up to 150,000 ringgit um, for the purchase of the vehicle and also the, to fit the vehicle um, with the necessary equipment uh, for you to run your business. Does, does so, the, the person applying for grant need to be uh, full-time or can they be part-time as well? <laughs> well, well, I think you know we got to look at it from a sustainability perspective, lah. You know, yeah. if you ask me, my, my boss, to... my boss will be will be furious hearing this from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, I think if, as with any business, you you must have, you must be committed. Yeah. You must commit your time. You must commit your energy, and you know, you we have to understand. Um, you know, in business, always the amount of effort you put in. Will, will be you know the direct you will see the direct results as as, the, as proportionate to the amount of effort that you put into your business so the amount of time the amount of um, you know passion that you invest in your business was always rewarded with the returns so uh, yeah so to short answer Fauzan is it has to be full time <laughs> yeah I can see Dr Sakina in the chat box already full uh, time so, so don't get any ideas <laughs> <laughs> Trying my okay. luck here. <laughs> the next program uh, I'd like to share, and this is a, a, a signature program um, and a very key program known as the Iskandar Malaysia Employment Grant. So the Iskandar Malaysia Employment Grant is actually a 50-50 salary matching grant uh, for employers to hire local talent um, and, and provide on-the-job training uh, for the talent that they hired into their business. So as you can see, the grant is actually quite a generous amount. Uh, it goes up to 2,000 ringgit per employee uh, for six months. Um, and that simply means that the, the organization that hires the person um, will have the opportunity to retrain or reskill the person to work in the new business environment. Now, this is actually very critical, especially now, um, you know, as we restart our lives back uh, post the pandemic. And, uh, you know, we, we ensure that I think many of us, uh, if not uh, some of us, have had career changes. You know, kalau dulu, I was, uh, you know, I bought, I was working in this line, tapi tiba -tiba because of the pandemic, I, you know, I'm now working in a different line altogether. For example, maybe I was in the tourism sector. Yeah, then masa tu bila COVID, I lost my job and you know I was struggling and and I'm now and then I got an opportunity in logistics for example yeah so it's an entirely different sector which means that you need to be retrained you need to be skilled and whenever an employer hires uh, someone the first thing that comes to their mind is alama I have to spend money now to train this person that I hired so I think this is where Ilda comes in and we we tell the employers hey look um that should not be holding you back from providing the opportunity uh, to the person. Yeah, so that's the reason why we have the Scandal Malaysia Employment Grant for you to actually draw on that grant to train and skill the people that you hire into your company. Lah. So I'm glad to say that this program has received very positive um, uh, reception from the business community. In fact, we've got more than 248 companies that mm. are part of this program. So and uh, you know, thus far, more than two thousand people have already benefited from this particular program, lah. And we we envision this to continue um, in in the time to come um, as we continue to rebuild and and restart the you know the employment market, bring it bring back the the labour force um, into what it was. I think from from the performance perspective. If you're looking at hiring someone who already has an experience, for example, if we're looking at airlines, when MCO hit, airline was badly hit, and we have seen a lot of airlines people has been cut off. 
I think uh, one of the cases that we're looking at before is that um, uh, a stewardess who's been being a stewardess since 18 years old, 19 years old, uh, couldn't, couldn't know what, what type of job that she needed to do. I think at that time, we, we, we made her realize that the, the, the value that she brings as a stewardess, I mean, communications, how she presents herself, personality is something that is uh, highly valued in another industry, i.e. the tourism at that time. So if this is something that that and, and it just it, it it she just take about two weeks to actually familiarize herself with the process and she'll fly. So right. those kind of things is something that that is not alien to uh, for 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 the industry itself. Mm. I think I think you you touched on a very interesting point there, you know, Rosan. I think sometimes, uh, especially you know, as youth, um, you know, you need to ask yourself what is the value that I bring to the table? Hmm. Uh, itu yang penting. Bukan kerja apa you buat. Apa, what, what is the character yang you ada? Okay? Apakah personality yang you ada? I think these are the values. If you look at the, you know, I, I, I talk to a lot of employers in Iskandar and also in the country and one of the things that employers will always tell you is character is everything. You know, um, you know the the passion that the person brings to the work sometimes is is a lot more than uh, is is valued higher than than the actual job that they do you know so i think this is where kita kena kita kena tahu kita kena list down you know if i if I, i would my advice to youths out there is take a piece of paper and list down what are the values that you have uh, so about value to yang penting Tomorrow you you may be you may be forced to move to a different industry. Tapi dalam industry yang baru tu, the, what will determine whether you're successful or not is how determined you are and how how you carry yourself and the the passion that you have towards the work that you do. You know, you you gave an example of an air stewardess. Um, you know, I I I I've seen some of them who yeah of course they lost their jobs and they were totally lost. I really pity these people. You know. Sekian lama you buat kerja ni, you tahu itu sahaja. And then, tiba-tiba, you know, because of no fault of yours, uh, you're now, you know, in a, in a bit of a limbo because you, you don't you don't, have, you don't have the opportunities or you don't know where to where to look for opportunities. And I know of some of them who have turned into, successfully, they have transformed themselves into the retail industry. You know, they have done so well in, uh, you know, in selling luxury goods and services. Uh, because of that very trait that they have, you know, the personality, the one personality, uh, the ability to to carry themselves well, uh, speak confidently, and I think these are these are some of the key elements that you need in a good salesperson, right? You need you need in a good uh, luxury salesperson. So I think you know these are these are where you know we we try to see what best we can do to uh, re-skill people. Um, and employers, I'm glad to say, uh, you know, have been very well, you know, they've received our programs quite well. So I think it's quite exciting like, when you see such, when, when you hear such stories. Okay, I will move to our, the, the next program that I'd like to share is uh, the Iskandar Malaysia Urban Farming or Imur Farm. Uh, now, this is, a, this is a basically a, um, an opportunity for those, uh, especially youths, to get into the farming uh, industry, the farming uh, trade, and, um, you know, it's the, 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 the program provides you with a grant, um, you know, available uh, for you to build your, you know, integrated farming system, um, and also getting into, um, you know, indoor farming, um, and, and for you to build your, yourself as a farmer. This is actually quite interesting, though, we look at the thing of farming. Ramai orang muda, dia fikir farming ni is something yang kerja kotor you know you have to go and you know be in the field under the sun you have to uh, you know soil soil with the you know play with the soil and get yourself dirty your hands dirty and what not sebenarnya tidak if you look at modern farming uh, you know these are there are so many techniques and systems out there uh, that allow you to you know run your farm um, in a much more dynamic way and which gives you better yield uh, for the produce that you that you cultivate, and if, it's really interesting. Uh, farming in me is actually big business. 
is good money. Yep. You know, so um, you know, I've I've known of uh, you know a couple of even architects who have just given up their careers and gone full time into farming, and they are loving it. You know, they're loving it because. Uh, kalau ada pandemik, ada pandemik, tak ada, tak ada pandemik, ekonomi bagus, tak bagus, semua orang kena makan lah kan? So, <laughs> yeah, so obviously there is always a demand for for produce, yeah, and uh, so I think um, you should also look at farming as a, as a sustainable way of uh, generating income lah. Yeah, so those are some of the key highlights uh, that I wanted to share through the programs. Now, of course, you can always go to the I Am Secure website to get more information um, and, uh, you know, and contact us if you're interested to participate in any one of these programs. I think uh, just just going to, move, to, to pick up some of your points earlier, uh, you talk about technology and we know that use uh, into that those sexy sexy industry kind of thing ai robotics which we, we are looking at a search uh, and growing of the industries inside iskandar putri in particular um, what is your view on the sustainability of the industry uh, from perspective of employment as well as startups i mean i'm seeing a lot of question on startup as well here yeah i think um, you mentioned a very interesting and emerging trend you know Fauzan. Uh, yeah. It's not AI and robotics is not just something uh, that's growing in in Malaysia, but I think it's a global phenomenon at the moment. Um, you know, even with the the COVID pandemic, actually has accelerated, if not anything, the need for uh, better AI systems um, and even robotics, not just in manufacturing but even in services. You know, um, I think in years to come we will start to see. Uh, the service sector adopting robotics in their, you know, in their value proposition, um, in their in their service delivery, and and I think this is something that is, um, it's not just, uh, you know, it's not just a trend, but I think it's going to be a norm in in the years to come. So, um, you know, I I believe uh, it's something that if you have the opportunity, and it's very exciting that the ecosystem is building in Iskandar Malaysia, um, and we are, you know, we are having programs, uh, for instance, the Prantis Iskandar Malaysia program, which is run by none other than EduCity, uh, is, 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 I think, a testament of one of those programs which uh, supports AI and robotics talent um, in Iskandar. So I think if, uh, if and, and, you know, drawing on my earlier point, right, you never had all these opportunities in Johor years ago. Exactly, yeah. You know, but sekarang dah ada. So I think... This is where our, our youths need to embrace this opportunity. Kalau sebelum ni tak tahu pasal these opportunities, today you know. Okay, because you attended the forum, hari ni you tahu. So start acting on it and, and be part of the, the wider agenda lah. I think uh, one of the participants in practice is Kanda, uh, graduated in Bachelor of Biomedical Engineering. And she she had a hard time looking for for job in in uh, in Johor lah, masa tu. So what we said is that you need to to look at it at a different perspective because you I mean if you want biomedical is something that not even in KL is not that that big lah. So what we what we did is that we 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 got her to understand that uh, AI is something. Uh, AI is blooming, AI is growing, and in needs of someone who uh, who has the expertise that she has, especially when we start to venture AI in medical industri uh, industries where we can actually uh, do some diagnosis with just a snap of pictures. So, so that is something that we're trying to do on the Prantis Iskandar, uh, the, the, the program that you mentioned earlier, lah, Mr. Prakash. Uh, uh, in terms of startup, I believe uh, the the programs under IRDA, under Secure, does uh, is also applicable for AI and robotics as well, right? Yes, it is. It is. Um, yep. In fact, we we always encourage um, you know new types of business models. Um, you know, if you have creative new business models, we always encourage that. But of course, in your creativity, ensure that there is also sustainability, lah. Mm, you know. Sure. Sure. Uh, I think. I think. You know, I think this that's very important. But at the same time, um, you know, be bold enough to expand horizons, you know. Uh, break convention, break barriers, because we all know that 
you know, the, the simplest of ideas is not actually driven by technology, but it's driven by conceptual thinking, right? Today, all of us uh, use smartphones. Now, what is the principle behind using a smartphone? It's about ensuring connectivity. It's about ensuring convenience, right? Uh, you know, today we order our food through our phone. We pay for our services. We pay for our purchases through apps, through our phone. All of which, you know, 10 years ago, uh, we wouldn't even have conceived it. Yeah. So I think this is where sometimes technology is, 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 a, is a tool. Uh, it's an enabler. But what determines your success is actually the conceptual thinking behind the use of that technology. How do you use that? Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm going to pick up one question. Uh, hi, Mr. Prakash. How can youth contribute in the development of Skandar Malaysia Corridor? Is their voice significant in the area of development? Most certainly it is. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we have had various... Uh, engagement programs with, with different youth groups and the youth, um, as I mentioned earlier in my presentation, is a key stakeholder to Iskandar Malaysia. Yeah, so we want to ensure that uh, no matter whatever investments or economic growth that we see here, the youth are not left behind. Mm -hmm. And if you ask me how can the youth contribute, my, my answer to that will be one, by ensuring that you are bold enough to seek out new opportunities. Uh, remember that this is this is a new Iskandar. This is a new uh, you know this is a new time. And with the COVID nineteen pandemic, I think um, there are various opportunities that have come uh, out today. You know, it's not just about we're not just confined to the local marketplace, uh, but we also have the digital marketplace, right? Sometimes bila saya beli barang online, I rasa macam kenapa apa yang saya beli ni asyik datang dari Kuala Lumpur saja. You know? <laughs> kenapa bukan dari Johor? Ah, hmm. uh, so I think this is something that kita kena, you know, we have to build lah. Yep. You know, I think I think you know, remember that you are not confined by just the geography now. You are you know, the one thing that you I think the youths must understand and appreciate is that programs yang saya present tadi tu hanya di Johor. Hanya di Johor. Yeah. So, you know, this is this is I think it's a, it's a blessing to be part of this geography. Uh, you have an opportunity that other your your other peers in other states don't have. Um, so my advice is make the best of it. You know, build yourself and 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 make the best of the opportunity that's available. You need to break convention, you need to start thinking differently. Uh, because remember that you know the world today is more receptive of doing things digitally. Huh? Sekarang kalau kalau dulu tak beli nak beli online ni everybody has skepticism tau benda ni betul ke? You know is it is it genuine to buy atau scam? But today people prefer to buy more online than they than they than go to the store. So so bila kita ada opportunity macam ni, why don't we use the 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 platform that we have? Uh, we have the I'm Start program. You know, we the, the government is already giving you a startup grant. So use it to the best of your ability. You know, buy yourself a good new laptop, build a, a you know, a, a digital storefront um, and, and start trading, start doing your business. I think that there's, there's already one uh, uh, cadangan from the youth lah. Uh, afternoon, Mr. Prakash. Is Iskandar kind of Malaysia planning to bring in more flagship retailers such as Decathlon here? <laughs> Looking at all the facilities here. I think this is something that I have very interest as well. Looking at all the facilities we have here in IM, I believe flagship retailers would be a great hit. I think, uh, you know, if we look at the retail scene um, in Johor, um, it has actually changed a lot over the years. Um, you know, in the past, um, many retailers, especially big brand retailers, did not want to set up their businesses in Johor because for two reasons. One, they felt that our, I mean, uh, at least they felt that the population size wasn't enough for them to get good returns on their investment. Secondly, um, you know, they, they felt, even kalau diorang datang pun, they're coming because they felt that, okay, uh, Singapore is next door. And if you look at the, the availability of uh, 
you know, branded goods in Singapore is obviously much more compared to what you have in, in Johor. But I think this convention has changed. You know. Today, um, I mean, as you mentioned earlier, Fauzan, we are seeing the the big malls like uh, Mid Valley, uh, Paradigm, all set up shop in Iskandar and Johor, right? So to me, that's that is an indication that the retailers are are now seeing the market, the potential market um, in in Iskandar and in Johor. I mean, today our population is is roughly at about 2.1 million, you know, and uh, you know our projection is in in the course of the next. Uh, five to six years, that number could very well go up to three million, you know, which is which is just a nice size, lah. So I think as the population grows, the retailers are starting to see the value, and they will make their their entry into Johor. Let's hope we have a decathlon here, guys. So <laughs> I, I think uh, maybe a last one from me. Um, uh, like you said, we. Uh, pandemic has been a, a blessing in disguise kind of thing. And because of Johor has been strategically located next to Singapore, we have always been the been known as the state uh, supporting Singapore. But when COVID hits, that is where we are seeing an influx of Singapore companies who are actually looking to set up shop in Johor. Because why? One is they realize that they have been um, relying on the talents from Malaysia, one. And number two, and memang, memang dia, dia orang tak boleh buat kerja lah tanpa kita sebenarnya. So, um, I think, I would, I would love to know your view on how, how would that be sustainable? Would that prolong even if COVID is not here after this? What do you think? Well, I think this is a trend um, that is going to stay. Okay. Um, you are correct. I think a lot of businesses, particularly those in the services line, have understood that they can actually tap on Malaysian talent uh, without the talent being physically located in Singapore. Yeah, Productivity remains the same. In fact, in some organizations, productivity even improve. Because why? They don't have to deal with the, uh, you know, the going in and out of immigration hassle and, you know, whatever not. So they are, you get better productivity uh, by having a virtual workforce located in Johor. And I think this has not only opened up an opportunity uh, for, you know, from Singapore, but I think it's a global opportunity. Yeah. I say global because, you know, a remote um, talent can work for any employer in the world. Yeah. So as long as you're even located in Johor, right, um, we have various co-working spaces here. Yeah, you can actually uh, build your your value, right? Uh, brand your identity to ensure that you are employable anywhere in the world. But you don't have to physically leave. You can do the job remotely. And imagine uh, you are earning the income that you are earning what what uh, what uh, what they would pay in the US or uh, Singapore. But you are living in Iskandar Malaysia in Johor. You know. So you you have the best of everything, right? You have you have a, a high paying job, you have a balanced lifestyle, um, and I think youth should actually look at this as a meaningful career path. Yeah. You know, don't look at it as something that uh, you know is one off. I'm just doing this temporarily before I get a physical permanent job somewhere. This is your job. Yeah. This is you. This is your identity. This is your value. This is your ethos, as I call it. Yeah. So build your ethos, build your brand, build your value proposition so that you can, you can sell your talent to anyone in the world. And you, you don't have to leave uh, Johor for doing, to do that. You can, you know, we can, we can be, we can become a world-class uh, virtual talent hub. You know, I think that that is something that we can do. And, and you know, this is something that is here to stay. Um, even some... Singapore uh, companies, especially the medium-sized ones and the smaller-sized ones that are doing manufacturing or assembly, I think they too realize that, you know, now it's better for them to operate out of Malaysia or out of Johor because, well, uh, they, they, they rely on a lot of local talent, you know. So if the, the, the productivity is there, if the output can be managed and, and the resource is there, why not, uh, you know, operate out of... Uh, Malaysia. 
And I think we are, we are seeing this in um, you know across several companies lah. You know, and and I think this is this is a trend that is here to stay. Um, and my advice would really please you know don't don't look at it as a one off stint, but rather build your 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 values, build your your value proposition to be a virtual talent, and you can you can actually work. Your employer can be from anywhere in the world. Yep, I think uh, my wife is actually using on that model. So she's currently working with uh, an agency from Singapore, but she's utilizing all the business services in Iskandar Putri, the co-working spaces, the lifestyle here. I mean, that is something that, uh, like you said, here to stay. Like she's loving it, uh, and I'm loving it because she's like very flexible. She can go and fetch my kid and all. So. <laughs> <laughs> so that is something that, that we're looking at. Uh, one of the plus points having in Johor, lah, especially. Okay. Um, okay uh, maybe last one for for Mr. Prakash to 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 actually uh, give some advice to the graduates, to the youth who, who are still looking for opportunities, who are still looking for apa hal tuju orang lah after this. Maybe last some last word from Mr. Prakash. Uh, my advice is don't give up. All right. Um, you must understand that sekarang ni the marketplace is actually more competitive. Um, you know, you are you are one among many. Okay. But remember, when you look at, I always say lah, kalau kita tengok, if we throw flowers, right? Um, you know, in 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 a in a basket, for example, what will stand out for you to pick that one flower? Yeah, it could be the the way the you know the, the bloom of the flower. It could be the color of the flower. There's some unique trait to that flower that will that will you know make you go and pick out that flower, right? So be that unique flower, right? Uh, build your 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 values, your ethos. Because remember, employers, dia banyak dia tengok character kita tau. Dia tengok kita punya values macam mana. How do we carry ourselves? Uh, during our, you know, our interviews, how are we, you know, do we share what are the values that we believe in, you know, when it comes to work? Um, is, uh, I think also more employers today are open to flexible working, right? Work, they, they know that work-life balance is important, right? But ensure that you are, you know, you, you have, you, you always have productivity in mind in whatever you do. I think that, that is what is going to determine Whether you get employed, I think having the right attitude and the right character, and ensuring that you don't give up, uh, be steadfast in your commitment, and you will definitely find an opportunity. Um, and and I believe that you know these next few years, you're gonna you're gonna have to look, you're gonna have to break convention, you're gonna you're gonna have to break barriers in your thinking, uh, start being creative, start looking for opportunity in everything, and you will most certainly find it. All right, thank you, Mr. Prakash. I think just to sum it up, um, for all our youth and the viewers out there, have the right character. Have the right character. Don't give up. Start look, being creative. And uh, either path that you're looking on, uh, whether it's startups or whether it's being a professional, being employed, there's always help. There's always assistance. There's always opportunities available. It's just a matter of whether. You you have to find it. So I think that's all from me. Uh, and thank you very much, Mr. Prakash, for making the time. It's a very fruitful and very informative session. Uh, pass it back to Husna. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the insightful session, Mr. Prakash and Mr. Pauzan. So that's is it, everyone. We have come to the end of today's webinar, brought to you by ADCT and is a part of Orang Muri Johor Festival. With that, I would like to thank everyone here for being with us today. I'm sure the participants have gained useful knowledge from our session today. For those who might have missed today's session, do not worry as we will upload them on our YouTube channel. Before I end today's session, a quick info sharing about our upcoming event. So we will have Xperia 2021 um, that offer content that will benefit the youth and the community at large. Theme, Build Back Better, Xperia 2021 will be organized from 3 December to 5 December 2021 with the content pillar of educational exhibition, sorry, 
sports, entrepreneurial, and family entertainment. Free access for all. The main attraction under exhibition is an education fair featuring speakers from the government and corporate agencies on job opportunities in Johor and a walk-in on-site interview. As part of our effort to support the economy, an entrepreneur's market and a food fest will be part of the attraction, including entertainment for the entire family, kids' activities, junior sports clinic, and enjoy the surreal view of Iskandar Putri with a ride on a hot air balloon. All are happening from 3rd December to 5th December 2021. Save the date to experience Eddie City and Iskandar Putri's biggest annual event. Also, don't forget to stay tuned for our next webinar series and do follow us on our social media account at Edu City Official for YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Please turn on your notification for upcoming events and webinars by Edu City. Till then, take care, stay safe, and we'll see you in the next webinar. Hashtag Edu City Jaga Kita. Bye! This is where it begins. A place where she can dive into her dreams and swim against the current to reach her goal. It is a starting point of a journey to explore uncharted territories, to use new knowledge for the best of mankind, Immersing in sustainable lifestyle Where you can feel the breeze on your skin It's times like this that makes you feel alive A time to create A time to capture precious moments Where dreams are no longer just a dream, but the beginnings of a new reality. This is where I harness my potential. This is where I explore possibilities. This is where I expand my mind. This is where her story begins. This is EduCity.